You're looking at a 1947 Westwood Tahoe manufactured by Westcraft of Los Angeles, California. The camper at the time of this filming belongs to Glenn. We drove to Chandler, Arizona to check it out. The Tahoe was the new member of the Westwood family. The printed brochure advertised that it had everything which contributes to luxurious appearance, always associated with Westcraft built travel trailers. The brochure also boasted about aircraft design and construction. A quick search on the internet will tell you that only a handful of these trailers of this vintage are known to exist. The camper is rough around the edges. Here, David and Glenn are discussing what it will take to give it some shine. After a nice visit, we drove into the sunset and juggled some figures in our heads. Our story only begins here. After some negotiations, we decided that the camper would be delivered on July 11th. I'm going to show you what it was like the day the camper arrived. And the reason for this is so that I can show why it looks like there's snow on the ground in the middle of summer in Prescott, Arizona. Glenn and Hunter did manage to take cover. Storm systems during monsoon do travel east to west and sometimes they can be full of surprises. does this trailer weigh this rv uh this is i want to say it's 1200 yeah might be a little more uh-huh but it's probably about 12. yeah it's good and uh yeah our first when we first got the truck uh -huh. we drove from san diego to oakland and we picked up oh man it might have been 1500 pounds of books and drove it back down south we went over the grapevine wow so it's been a it's, good truck it served you well we're here with our latest project at Cars Plus, a Westwood Tahoe camper, which we're going to restore the outside. It was restored years ago, both outside and inside. The outside is showing wear and tear. We're gonna re-restore that so that the owner can sell it on. Here's the original Westwood Tahoe badge. It was made by West Craft Incorporated in Los Angeles, and it even has its serial number right here on the camper. And it's got quite a story that in a follow-up video we hope to tell you about. 
and it has been restored for quite a number of years. It's late 40s, you know, 47-ish for a camper. And in this video, let's go along and show you the current condition. You can see there are some different shades in its sort of yellow tan paint from wear and tear. Has a maroon up above, has a white top. Then you can see throughout that it's got things such as little bubbling and cracking in some of the ceiling that we're going to have to fix. It is screwed together as well as riveted together, made of aluminum. It did belong to, and still does, to Dinny Films International, a motion picture company. This is actually somebody who's in the motion picture business that we're doing this for. And he fell in love with it, redid the whole trailer, and as we've said, he's had it for years. As we come along, we'll look at a number of the problems and what we're going to have to do to fix it. You can see we have a lot of wear and tear that's come along where the paint is damaged or paint is flaking off. In some cases, it's because we question a little bit about the prep of some of this surface, but mostly it's just years and years of being out in the sun and weather that has to be fixed. So we will be going through and checking all of these surfaces, loose, getting anything that's loose, and of course everything has to be sanded and repairing all of these small items that are problems throughout the vehicle. But there are some larger problems that we'll look at now. At this point, you can see I'm going to have to straighten it a little bit, so I'll do a little metal work, and we'll refinish that area in preparation for paint. The same thing is true around the back here on the side, and it's on both the passenger side and driver's side, probably because of backing into things just slightly when the trailer has been put certain places, so we'll be fixing that up. You'll notice down here these are rivets that are in use, but an interesting thing we found is some of these rivets are steel, which is not good. You can see down here they're rusted, and that tells me for sure I've got steel rivets in an aluminum panel. Aluminum should have aluminum rivets only. It is not a good idea. So these rivets are going to have to come out and be replaced with aluminum rivets so that we solve the problem here. You're going to have a lot more corrosion over time. It's going to deteriorate immensely. This problem here, you see this big crack? There is filler that was put on here in the, in the past. That particular filler is not the right type of filler to use because it's too thick for it. On top of the fact, the reason it's cracked is the metal is separated here because of failure of this rivet in particular. And it looks like this rivet also. So we're going to have to re-rivet this, take this filler out, and properly fix that. Example here on the back, you'll see that I've got red putty in places. Now the reason I would use red putty is because these are very small imperfections that I've made sure I've got the imperfection out and there's probably 30 times the red putty as will be there when it's done. We'll show you on, as we come around the side how little red putty will actually remain at those points that are being worked on. The back of the trailer, other than these lower sections, is in really good shape and not bad at all. We're having to go along on the edge of the ceiling on the window because it's not nicely done, so I'm going to clean that up everywhere. You see there's excess ceiling here sticking out. I'll go along and clean all this up, just as I've already cleaned it up down here, so that it's going to look appropriate instead of having little gobs sticking out, which to me does not look good enough, so we're going to fix that. The original trailer was finished in an enamel finish. We're going to do the same sort of enamel finish. It's not going to be super shiny because it's going to be the type of enamel finish you would have had back in the time, which is more like this. There is a shine to it, but it isn't like wet shine like you might see in a base clear system. Over here on this side of the trailer, this section has been sanded with 320 grit sandpaper and a dual action sander to see what we're going to get as results. This middle portion is pretty much what you're going to see, and with red putty you see these little pieces that are left. They're all quite small needs to be more sanding in this area, but one of the things that's happening that I've noticed, I'm going to demonstrate here for you, is the fact that the paint on the screws is not adhering at all on this in most cases. Okay, we'll look at, you know, at this one right here. Close-up on this little guy. Action. The close-up on this one, you can see that the paint on here has sections that come off easy because this section popped off easy earlier but other sections might be okay but you see it's not even hard for me to remove it some of the times when i hit some of these screws the stuff just pops like that 
So the paint's gonna have to come off all the screws. It looks to me as though the screws weren't properly primed originally. So we're gonna take all the paint off of them and then we'll prime them with a self-etching primer so that the paint will actually adhere to them as we go through. When we look in this section, you'll notice all this red putty that's been put on. This is what's gonna end up happening to a large portion of the trailer on this side. But if we pan down and look down here, where I've sanded for a test with 320 grit sandpaper, this whole section through here is gonna to have to have a different filler put on it. We're going to have to completely fill and fix this. We cannot use red putty for something like that. That's for little bitty teeny pieces. This is going to be a completely different filler to fix these areas. And there's a large portion on this side of the trailer that's like that. We'll go down and we'll look and see how, let the camera show how bad it really is here. Because we're going to have to completely redo this section. Most of this paint will come off in order to fix things up. And then again, there'll be the 320 sandpaper, uh, you know, dual action sander and other sanders because of the various contours, etc. To get rid of all that there's also a number of screws you can see here screws that are rusty i'll pick up new screws and replace those because we're not going to give this back to somebody with rusty screws my thought would be you'd be better off with stainless steel screws at those points to solve that the same thing is true here let's show bring the camera to the end of the trailer we could use some stainless steel screws for each of the side lights, which are really kind of cool, but they could use some stainless steel screws to get rid of the problem. Now those are general problems we've got to fix. We've got work throughout on the roof a little bit too. Not much up there. It seems to have fared better probably because it's white. Between takes, you can tell we've been sanding and doing things on the trailer. Something else that we should point out is up here on the rear, this driver's side. We're told this is tree damage. We're going to fix this up. So it's properly done and it'll look beautiful. You won't ever notice it, but that needs to be taken care of. There you have a little background on the trailer and what's being done to it. We hope to do a follow-up video with the owner telling us the backstory because it's really quite interesting. Probably more interesting than even looking at the trailer today.